Philip of Austria, who became Philip II of Spain uh. on January 16th, 1556. Yo guys, it's your boy Fabian, back again with another video. And today it's time to react to something related to the Philippines. It's not music, you've seen in the title, I'm doing something different. So yeah, I'm reacting to the history of the Philippines in 12 minutes. And listen, like I said on my channel, I like to do a variety of things, not just music. And you know what, you guys from the Philippines have been incredible with me, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do it. So I'm checking this out. Listen, I don't know the history of the Philippines, this could be right, this could be wrong, I don't know, but we will see. But before we check out guys, make sure you subscribe down below, press the bell notification button down below so you can be the first to know when I upload. Check out the other Filipino reactions I've done because I've done quite a few. And keep an eye out because there's more coming. But let's stop with the talking and crack on with the video. The history of the Philippines in 12 minutes. Let's go. The history of what is today the Philippines started with the arrival of its first humans. It is believed they used rafts or boats around 60,000 years ago, with groups of diverse people settling in the archipelago. Some of these groups started to develop and expand into bigger settlements, and in the next thousands of years, they evolved into what some scholars believe to be considered early states. Austronesians and afterwards speakers of the Malayo-Polynesian languages. Do you know what's mad here? When you look at these kind of, when you watch these kind of videos, you're not look at, when you watch these kind of videos or when you just like delve into the history of not just the Philippines, any country, right? And you see what the world was like back then, it feels like a completely different world. And when I'm saying completely different world, obviously it's different because it's a completely different time. It just feels like how did some of these things like happen? How did some of these events exist? It just feels mad. Began to arrive in successive waves beginning about 4,000 BC. According to the existing evidence, a jade culture existed in these lands, starting with the Neolithic era. By 1000 BC, it is believed that the inhabitants of the archipelago had developed into four distinct kinds of people. Tribal groups, warrior societies, the petty plutocracy, and the harbor civilizations. Also important to note is the fact that the metallurgy reached the archipelago due to trade with India. You see what I mean, yeah? When you watch these kind of videos, I swear to you, it feels like they say certain words or, or like there's certain like, not, I'm not just talking about this um, video by the way, but it feels like there's certain countries or certain tribes or whatever it might be yeah, that, that you've just never heard of. Honestly, it's insane. Around 300 to 700 AD, the seafaring people of the islands began to trade with the Indianized kingdoms in the Malay archipelago and the nearby East Asian principalities, adopting influences from both Buddhism and Hinduism. Ooh. Some cultures of present-day Vietnam showed evidence of an extensive trade network. Artifacts and goods were traded, such as glass, agate, or gold. There were also other items present in the region which were most likely imported, including ear ornaments that have been found in archaeological sites in the Philippines, Thailand, and Taiwan. The Indian culture influenced the Southeast Asian region, starting with the first century. During the period of the South Indian Pallava Dynasty and the North Indian Gupta Empire, Indian culture spread to Southeast Asia. That's a good point, actually, you know. So, obviously, um, like he's talking about um, there's a lot of Indian influence. So, I'm going to ask you guys, because obviously you guys are Filipino watching this, and there's a lot of you guys in the Philippines watching this. What is the breakdown in terms of, like, religion in the Philippines? Because, um, yeah, like, I, I haven't really checked that, to be honest with you. I probably should have. But, yeah, that's why you guys are here. So, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Asia, and it reached the Philippines, which led to the establishment of new kingdoms largely influenced by the Indian culture and traditions. The date inscribed in the oldest Philippine document found so far, the Laguna Copper Plate inscription, is 900 AD. From the details of the document, written in Kawi script, the bearer of a debt, Namwaran, along with his children, is cleared of a debt by the ruler of Tondo. This is the earliest document that shows the use of mathematics in pre-colonial Philippine societies. A standard system of weights and measures is also demonstrated by the use of precise measurement for gold and other items, as well as in astronomy. From the various Sanskrit terms and titles seen in the document, the Do you know what it is here? So when I watch these kind of things here, or just in general, because I'm that kind of person here, 
I really overthink stuff. I really delve into it, yeah. And when I'm watching this here, like, I'm just here thinking, yeah, like, I'm here in this world right now, yeah, but like, there was a world, like, thousands of years ago. Like, that, that is insane. And there's gonna be a world thousands of years from now where you'd hope for, um, for future civilizations. But, um, yeah, it's just crazy how long uh, the world's been about. The culture and society of the Manila Bay were that of Hindu Old Malay amalgamation, similar to the cultures of Java, Peninsular Malaysia, and Sumatra at the time. In the years leading up to 1000, there were already several maritime societies existing in the islands, but there was no unifying political state encompassing the entire Philippine archipelago. Instead, the region was divided into numerous semi-autonomous city-states under the rule of the plutocracy, while a number of states existed alongside the Highland society. I'll tell you this here, yeah. Seeing this here, Philippines has one of the most complicated histories when it comes to, um, like, the history. These smaller structures alternated between being part of or being influenced by larger Asian empires like Maya Pahit. Around 1225, the nation of Mai, a Buddhist pre-Hispanic Philippine island state centered in Mondoro, flourished, attracting traders and shipping from the kingdom of Ryukyu to the empire of Japan. Chao Jakua, a customs inspector in Fukien province, China, wrote the description of the barbarous peoples, describing trade with this pre-colonial state. Its people were noted for their honesty in trade. Much of what is now Indonesia was ruled by the Hindu Maya Pahit Empire. During the 1300s, this empire ruled over Luzon Island and the Sulu Archipelago. As more and more influence was on these islands, skirmishes and battles also existed. Some local tribes were waging incessant guerrilla warfare against them. Eventually, the kingdoms of Luzon re- Okay, so now we're getting into the nitty gritty of it. We're talking about guerrilla warfare now, so uh, yeah, now it's really heating up. Gained independence from Maya Pahit after the Battle of Manila, 1365. Sulu also re-established independence, and in vengeance, assaulted the Mayapahit province of Brunei before a fleet from the capital drove them out. The start of the Islamic era in Indonesia set the collapse of the Mayapahit as its provinces eventually seceded and became independent sultanates. In 1380, Makdum Karim, an Arab trader born in Johor, arrived in Sulu from Malacca and brought Islam to the Philippines. Additionally, Sharif ul Hashim, an Arab Muslim explorer, is... So, initially, um, Hinduism was brought into it, I'm pretty sure, and now Islam is being brought into the Philippines, so, yeah, and we're talking about, what was it, 13-something, um, the 1300s, let's say. So, um, yeah, quite a while back now, but who knows what it's like now, that's why I asked you guys to let me know in the comments below. Established the Sultanate of Sulu by converting its previous ruler, the Hindu king Raja Bagwinda, to Islam, and then marrying his daughter. The Sultanate of Magindanao rose to Wait, 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 I'm gonna go back there. What did he say? Converting its previous rules wait. war, established the Sultanate of Sulu by converting its previous ruler, the Hindu king Raja Bagwinda, to Islam, Ooh. and then marrying his daughter. The Sultanate of Magindanao rose to prominence at the end of the 15th century. Meanwhile, the religion was introduced to the area by Muslim missionaries and traders from the Middle East, Indian, and Malay regions who propagated Islam to Sulu and Magindanao. As before, when Buddhist and Hindu cultures influenced the archipelago, the same case happened with the Muslim culture. Upon the secession of Brunei from the Maya Pahit Empire, they imported the Arab Emir from Mecca, Sheriff Ali, has became an independent. When religion gets involved here, it becomes so, so, so complicated. Like, look at what's going on here. If some of this stuff didn't happen, who knows, for example, what the Philippines would be here. That's what I mean, yeah? Like, that's why I overthink stuff here, because butterfly effect. Then Sultanate, the new religion, started to grow roots in the Philippines through conquest and conversion of local leaders in the next decades. Moreover, Islam was further strengthened by the arrival to the Philippines of traders and proselytizers from Malaysia and Indonesia. In 1521, 
The Spanish reached the archipelago through the expedition around the world, led by Portuguese-born Spanish explorer Ferdinand Magellan. Claiming the islands he saw for the Spanish Empire, he established friendly relations with some of the local leaders and converted some of them to Roman Catholicism. Because the Philippines are a large archipelago... So here comes Christianity now. So now we've got a mishmash of religions. Crazy. Now you see here yeah, for like the last like, well, half of the video now here yeah, is being like predominantly about religion. Man. The Spaniards started to explore many islands. However, the explorer Ferdinand Magellan was killed during the Battle of Mactan against the local ruler Lapu Lapu. Over the next several decades, other Spanish expeditions were dispatched to the islands. In 1543, an expedition was led to the islands, naming them Philippines, in honor of Philip of Austria, who became Philip II of Spain uh. on January 16, 1556. You see, I would have never ever known that yet if I didn't react to this video. So that's why I really enjoy doing this kind of thing. The name was then extended to the entire archipelago later on in the Spanish era. European colonization began in earnest when Spanish explorer Miguel Lopez de Legazpi arrived from Mexico in 1565 and formed the first European settlements in Cebu. Through diplomatic and military annexation of some lands, incorporating local states including the Kingdom of Tondo, the Spaniards established Manila as the capital of the Spanish East Indies. In 1578, the Castilian War erupted between the Christian Spaniards and Muslim Bruneans over control of the Philippine archipelago. The Christian troops were so diverse due to generally being made up of people under the Spanish rule, including Native Americans, namely Aztecs, Mayans, and Incans, who were gathered and sent from Mexico and South America to be led by Spanish officers that had worked together with Native Filipinos in so, by the way, sorry about that, yeah, just, yeah, laptop playing up. But, yeah, I wanted to ask you guys here yeah, because, um, obviously, I know about, like, the relationship between, like, Spain and the Philippines just a little bit. But let me know, because um, I want to know from you guys directly, how do you guys, like, view Spain? Do you know what I mean? Is there, like, a relationship there, a good one, a bad one? How do you guys view it? So, um, yeah, let me know in the comments below because I'll be very interested to know directly from you guys military campaigns across Southeast Asia. The Muslim side was also very diverse though. They were supported by the Ottoman Empire, with their troops consisting of Malay warriors and expeditionary forces sent by the Ottomans, which included mainly Turks, Egyptians, Swahilis, Somalis, Indians, and others. The conflict ended with a status quo antebellum. Just 20 years after the conquest of Luzon, remarkable progress existed in the work of colonization of the islands and the spread of Christianity. A cathedral was built in the city of Manila with an Episcopal palace. Other monastery and churches were built across islands and more and more people started to convert to Christianity. Okay, so you see, this is what I thought initially, right, when it comes to religion. I thought it was predominantly a Christian country because of like the relationship with Spain. But then there's countries around there like Indonesia, Malaysia that have a lot of like Islam within the country. So um, yeah, that's why I was wondering. Furthermore, Spanish and Mexican families settled in the new lands, creating stronger communities. Much of the archipelago came under Spanish rule, creating the first unified political structure known as the Philippines. Spanish colonial rule saw the introduction of Christianity, the code of law, as the oldest modern university in Asia. The Philippines was ruled by the Mexico-based vice royalty of New Spain, and after, the colony was directly governed by Spain. Many of the local people revolted in the next centuries due to some abuses made by the Spanish authorities. Their rule ended after the American-Spanish War at the end of the 19th century in 1898. The and now you see the relationship that the Philippines has with the United States of America as well. You see, this is why it's fascinating here because you know the relationships nowadays, right? Because obviously, like, I've got a best friend that's um, Filipino. So I kind of know a little bit, right, when it comes to um, the relationships with, that the Philippines has with certain countries, right? But you don't know where it kind of, like, originated from. So that's why these videos, pff, very fascinating. Philippines became a territory of the United States. 
The United States Ooh. then established the insular governments to rule the Philippines. In 1907, the elected assembly was set up with popular elections. Do you know what's crazy as well when it comes to history? You see when there's wars and, and you've got like colonies and all of this stuff, yeah? Countries, the bigger countries, they swoop in as if they're gonna like help you out and whatnot, yeah? They might help you out to an extent, but then you're under their rule. Like, it's, there's always like a, a, little, um, a little agenda somewhere, always. The US promised independence in the Jones Act to the country as the Philippine Commonwealth was established in 1935 as a 10 year interim step period to full independence. But before gaining total freedom, in 1942, during World War II, the Philippines was occupied by Japanese forces. By 1945, the U.S. liberated the Philippines and the Treaty of Manila in 1946 established an independent Philippine Republic. The period of their independence was marked by internal skirmishes and a smaller period of dictatorship, but also huge progress and development, with Manuel Roxas becoming the first president of the independent Republic of the Philippines. The United States seceded its sovereignty over the Philippines on July 4, 1946 as scheduled. However, the Philippine economy remained highly dependent on United States markets. Roxas died suddenly of a heart attack in April 1948. Oh, so 4th of July is quite an important day for quite a lot of people. Yeah, man, it's just crazy like what the Philippines has been through as a country. Like, so many different um, religions, um, so many different um, countries. Yeah, man. Crazy history. And the Vice President Elpidio Quirino ruled the country until 1953. Some communist partisans existed in the islands but were defeated in the 50s. Additionally, an important event happened in the middle of the 1960s. Ferdinand Marcos took power in 1965 and ruled until 1986. This era included the final years of the Third Republic from 1965 to 1972 and the Philippines under martial law 1972 to 1981. His reign was marked by dictatorship and instability. In 1986, Ferdinand Marcos was removed from power and replaced by Maria Corazon Aquino. Up to the present day, five other presidents ruled the Philippines. Alright guys, that's it for checking out the history of the Philippines in 12 minutes and fascinating history. We learned quite a lot there. You guys probably knew it, I didn't and you know what, I'm happy I checked it out because I feel like I know it quite a lot more. So um, yeah man, it's nice to do this kind of thing. Let me know in the comments below guys, what do you think? Do you enjoyed this kind of video? Like, share, subscribe, comment below, um, suggestions, whatever kind of video and I'll try to check it out for you guys. But I'm gonna have to love you and leave you. So thanks for watching. Keep yourself safe out there. Have a good day. Have a good evening. And until next time, guys, I hope you have a good one.